echoes how the heavens will ring. Billions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Raising Christ to ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on oh, that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Well, thank the Lord for that good old song right there. <clears throat> right before the message. So today I want to be talking, if you get your Bible out, I want to be talking to you about uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, and John, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 3. I want to talk to you the difference about the washing of the water by the word. He says in, in 26, verse 26 of Ephesians, he says, that ye may, might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word right there. So I have to take a spiritual bath every day. Every day I have to go to God and, and I talk to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm weak right here. Help me. Lord, I sin right here. Help me, Lord. Forgive me. <clears throat> have mercy on me, Lord. And he has mercy on me. And every Christian needs a spiritual bath every day. Every one of us need a spiritual bath every single day and be totally honest with God. That's one of the keys and one of the most important things you can do is to be totally honest with the Lord. You can read your Bible. If you're not honest with God, you're not going to get much out of it. You can pray, but if you're not honest with God, you ain't going to get much out of it. If it ain't a sincere prayer of repentance or, or just telling the Lord how weak you are, help me, Lord, and things like that, you're not going to get much out of it. The way you approach God is in total honesty. We we was totally honest before the Lord when we got saved, and God knew he was a sinner. He knew everything about us. And you knew you was a sinner, and you brought it before the Lord and said, Lord, I'm so full of sin and stupidity. You might not say that with your mouth, but your heart was speaking that, and you cried out to Jesus, and you said, I need a Savior right there. And you said you need a Savior because you realized you was a sinner because you heard the word of the Lord right there. So we're saved by the word of God. We take a spiritual bath in the word of God every day. We have to read this Bible every day and get in there and pray to the Lord every day. This is a good chapter of Ephesians chapter 5, but I want to bring the get the confusion out of some people. Let's go to the Gospel of John. Chapter 3, verse 5. Let's get the confusion out a little bit. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, what is that saying right there? Now, a lot of people says a lot of things right there. Some people say the washing of the water by the word is the water that he's talking about. No, that's not. And some people say that it's water baptism that he's talking about. No, that's not. So let's look at it again. Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. Notice that. Born of water. Born of water. And then born of the Spirit. So that's two births right there. you got to look at that. And then he explains it in the next verse what he's really talking about. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's being born of the water. You're born in your water, mama's water bag, and then your body is so much percentage water. And I believe he's talking about the water bag right there because I don't think they had science to know your body was so much percentage of water back then. Maybe they did. I don't know. But they had the evidence of water. When a woman's fixing to have a baby, the water spills out right there. The water bag busts. That's being born of water. Notice that right there. Now, some people say that's the washing of water by the word. No, that's not right there. Though that's a good thought, but that's not what he's talking about. You got to look at it a little closer. Let's not add to the word of God. And I know a lot of people are not trying to add to the word of God, but I've, I've hear a lot of preachers and I've heard a lot of things and I've been saved for about 30 years now and it's been a glorious 30 years 
And I'm not the smartest one on the tool rack right there. But I do know about this eternal life. I do know about getting saved. I do know about being born again right there. I do have experience in that category right there. And being born of water simply means the fleshly birth, the water birth, the natural birth right there. Let's don't get that confused. Well, you might say, well, I, I, this good scholar told me or I read in this book. I, I don't go by what scholars say. I don't go by what commentaries say. Though there might be some good commentaries and there might be some good scholars out there. But I don't go by them because I find too many errors in people because a lot of them ain't saved. A lot of them's not walking in the fear of God. And when they make statements like that, they don't fear the Lord. You know, you know what I mean? So I fear God and I want God to show me these scriptures right here. He says, born of water is the fleshly birth, the first birth. And that which is born of the spirit. What's that mean? That's the second birth right there. You get the Holy Spirit right when you get saved. When you repented of your sins, like, like I did. When I was seven years old, I didn't get saved. But you know, I believed in Jesus when I was seven years old. But I didn't believe in my heart. I believed in my mind. I had vain belief it wasn't good enough to get me to heaven. That was the outer man right there. He believed. And when I heard the word, it, I kind of rejoiced at the word at seven years old. I believe I was seven. I can't pinpoint the exact age, but I believe I was seven years old when I really heard God. And he spoke to this Sunday school preacher at a Baptist, uh, uh, Orchard Baptist Church, I believe it was. And I remember that man's tears when he talked about the death, burial, and resurrection. And evidently, he must have told me I needed to be saved. Because I went home, and, and I, told, I told my brothers I'm going to read the whole Bible. I was about seven. I don't know how exactly how old I was. But I said, I'm going to read the whole Bible. And I didn't last ten verses. And I didn't pick that thing up as far as I know until I was about 20 years old. You know what I mean? The devil distracted me so much. I set out to read the Bible. He distracted me so much, and I didn't pick that thing up as far as I know until I was about 20 years old when I got saved and born again right there. So God dealt with me all my life, all the way from when I was a little boy. He drawed me. He dealt with me. He spoke to me. And when I was a teenager, he really dealt with my heart at a funeral one time. I, the pastor, He wasn't my pastor at the time, but... <clears throat> He dealt with me at that funeral, and he really made himself known to me at that funeral. I don't know how old I was, but time went on. I didn't get saved. And then when I was 19, God began to deal with me. He began to put a hunger in me for his word. His spirit started getting around me. I sensed a spirit around me, not in me, because I wasn't saved yet. I believed in Jesus. I believed in the death, burial, resurrection, but I wasn't saved yet, and I knew I wasn't saved. And I always told God, save me one day. That's why I told God. And finally, he spoke to my heart that night. I turned 20. He dealt with me for about a year or so, a few months. And he got in the car with me. I was driving to Alabama, and he spoke to my heart that night. He said, if you don't get saved now. He's been dealing with me since I was a little boy. He said, if you don't get saved now, I'll never deal with you again. And I tell you, it was so real. I felt him in the back seat. It was so real that I cried out. I looked in the back seat and cried out to him. I said, no, Lord. That was my heart speaking. My heart was crying out to God. I believed him instantaneously in my heart. I turned from my wicked ways and turned to God. Just like the Thessalonians, they, they turned from idols to God to serve the true and living God. I turned in my heart right then and there. And that's what happens when you get saved. You turn from sin. You give up sin right there and you turn from sin. That's called repentance right there. And I turned from sin and turned to Jesus and I cried out to the Lord and he saved my soul. The very instant I gave this world up, the very instant I wanted above life itself right there and I called on him with that contrite spirit and that broken heart that's when he came in my heart, and he saved my soul, and I was born of the Spirit of the living God. I felt the Spirit come in my heart right there. <clears throat> so look at that a little bit. So let's look at this. Now, some people say that you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost later. They're just confused in the book of Acts. 
you know, the book of Acts is a, a transition time and it where some Christians did not have the Holy Ghost yet because, and, and Jesus said, it's not yet given, but when I go away, I'm going to send a comforter. And it took the disciples to go out and send a comforter. He preached to them like Peter come to Philip's uh, preaching right there. And they laid their hands on him and, and they received the Holy Ghost. So some people think you get the Holy Ghost later. You know what I'm saying? But that's not so. That's a false doctrine. I'm not trying to dog you because you believe that because you see it in the Scriptures, but you got to understand what the Scriptures are trying to say in the book of Acts. It was that transition time right there. So right when we got saved now, we received the gift of the Holy Ghost in our heart. That's being born of spirit. That's the second birth. You know, you're born one time in the water birth, the born of water right there, and then now you're born of the spirit of the living God. He's alive in your heart. And I just can't understand people that say, <clears throat> well, I didn't feel nothing when I got saved. Or, you know what I mean? And I know people say, well, you can't go on your feelings. You can't go on the feelings of the flesh, but you can go on the feelings of the Spirit of God. It's plain and simple as that. God is in me of a truth. I felt it. He, that is a witness that I'm saved is because, look at John. That's a witness that I'm saved because I received the Spirit of God. And guess what? I have peace with our Lord Jesus Christ in my heart. When a Christian is truly saved, when he's saved, he feels peace with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he don't no longer look at God like he's a, a, a big God or, you know, that he's somebody else. He looks at him like, that's my father. My spirit's crying out, Abba, Father. I've got a real relationship with God now that I got saved. God is somebody I used to respect. God is somebody before I got saved that I used to believe in, but he was not my father. He was somebody I respected and somebody I believed, and I believed every word. When somebody told me something about the word of God, I believed it. But I never received it into my heart. Never received him as my personal savior until I was 20 years old. Right there. So what does it mean to be born of water? That's the natural birth. And it doesn't mean to be born of the spirit. That's being born again. Not of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Think about that. And then he just explains in verse 6 what he's talking about in verse 5. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, don't be amazed. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Right there, notice being born again that didn't say again and again if I fall and, and if I sin or if I turn my back on God, I got to come back and get saved again. The Bible don't teach that right there. Go go to my teachings on the internet, Brother Bobby Anderson, Pastor Bobby Anderson, and, and listen to some of my sermons right there. I'm nothing special. There's nothing good about me except Jesus in me right there. That's the only reason I'm going to heaven. But go back and listen to some of them right there or listen to a real preacher and you'll see that I believe in eternal life, being born again, not again and again and again. I got saved 20 times. You heard people say that stuff. That's not true doctrine right there. That's false doctrine right there. I got the spirit of the living God on the inside. Now, back to the point of you receiving the, the baptism later. So what they're getting confused too, <clears throat> and a lot of you Baptists, y'all might disagree with me. I'm a Baptist. And there's a reason I'm a Baptist. I'm an independent, fundamental, Baptist, King James only. And that offends people. You know what I mean? I understand that. <laughs> you know, but I believe that you get filled with the Spirit of God later. As you start living for the Lord and walking in the fear of God, let's think about this for a second. <clears throat> if you're saved, you can't expect God's Spirit to bless you if you don't live for him. I'm not talking about if you're perfect. Because we'll never reach perfection. I don't even think we'll come close. I mean, we're that rotten. This old flesh is rotten to the core. The only good thing about us is God in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's what saved our soul. Our soul is going to heaven. Our soul is made perfect in Christ. That's why we're going to heaven. When we die, our soul will come out of our body and it'll enter into heaven. We'll go out through the body of Christ right there. But this old flesh is rotten to the core. 
Don't give us a license to sin because our flesh is rotten to core. God gave us strength through Christ. We can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. So we can live this Christian life if we'll just keep following the Lord. If we'll keep trusting in God. We keep pouring our hearts out to God. We can live a Christian life. But I just, I ain't never, I ain't never been perfect. And I ain't never seen nobody perfect except Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? So just think about that just a little bit. There's not, none of us perfect right there. But what I talk about living for the Lord is when you're dedicating your life to Jesus, yeah, you make mistakes, but you're trying to dedicate your life. You're walking in the fear of God. And you're confessing as you go, and you're trying to forsake as you go. You're trying to get closer as you go, and God looks at that right there. And then God will bless you with fellowship, and God will deal with your heart and, and speak to you clearer because he can, because you're not so full of sin. And God will bless you and fellowship with you, and he will reward you down here, down here, <clears throat> And he'll also reward you when you get to heaven right there. God will fellowship with you and his spirit will come and make his abode with you and, and fill you with his spirit. You'll feel his presence when you're preaching. When you're testifying to somebody, you're going to feel God's presence. And then when you're, uh, you know, you're preaching, God can fill you with his Holy Spirit. I'm talking about he'll give you a shout. Now, I know a lot of people don't like that shouting stuff because a lot of people fake shout. You know what I mean? They've been raised that way to shout and, you know, and holler out in the church. But I don't believe in hollering out in the church unless God hollers through you. And you will feel God's presence when he does that right there because that's happened to me plenty of times. You know what I mean? You will feel God's presence. Nobody says that God is on you and you don't feel him. That's foolishness right there. It's just plain and simple as that. That's foolishness. But God will bless you with his spirit. And that, that does come later. Sometimes it comes quicker on other Christians. If you're a Christian like Paul the Apostle, he went immediately to Arabia and got still before the Lord. He didn't go to the other Christians. He went to Arabia and got still before the Lord. Think about that. He got still before the Lord and God blessed him even stronger, quicker. Notice that the Bible says he increased he ate the meat of the Lord, and he increased in God. Right there. Read it over there. He increased more and more. And God wants us to increase more and more and be more stiller through his word. I mean, get in there and study this word for yourself. Don't rely on commentaries. Don't rely on sermons on the internet where you say, well, what am I going to preach today? Let me go see what brother so-and-so says. <clears throat> now, God has gave me sermons before by listening to another brother's preaching and I wasn't hunting it, but God just spoke to my heart about it out of his preaching. That's happened a few times. And sure enough, that's what God wanted me to preach. I proved it out and God's spirit came on me and, you know, sometimes he'll give it in different ways. Sometimes he'll bring things to your remembrance, what you should be studying that week. And that's what I do. I just study. You know what I mean? I don't plan a sermon out, but I study it if God wants me to do that. And then sometimes when I get up there to preach, God said, no, that ain't what I want you to preach. <laughs> and then we'll turn. He'll let you know. He'll let you know what to say in that hour. You know, sometimes God will give you one little passage. You, you reading the whole thing, the whole chapter, and you're studying it all week or this whole book, or you study all, all he wants is that one, one chapter. And then he'll add different things that you've studied that week in there. But let God do it. You don't add those thoughts. Let God do that. Now, I'm not saying God's not using you for doing that. <clears throat> but you'd be better off not to plan it out. He told Ezekiel, he said, Ezekiel, go out and eat that roll. Eat that roll. What's that? That's the word of the Lord. Go out and eat that roll. And then I want you to go out and tell the world about it. Notice that. And that is the way he does us today. Those that try to do his will <clears throat> will eat this roll of the word of God and he'll give it out. And he'll bring things to your remembrance that you've studied. But then sometimes he'll just be totally off what you studied and he'll bring things back to remembrance that you studied years ago. Stuff that you didn't even know you knew 
sometimes will fly out of you. Now you have to know them, but you didn't really, you didn't remember them. All of a sudden, here they come. That's the hand of God, right here. But I don't know how I got on all of that. <clears throat> but just look at that right there. Just look at these scriptures. Now, some people say that's water baptism, right there. Well, that's not water baptism because we don't believe in water baptism to get you saved. The Bible says it's not by works, not by what I can do. All I got to do is just turn from my wicked ways and place my faith in Jesus right there, receive him as my personal Savior, trust in him, lean on him for my salvation. And you know how I know that? Not just because the Bible says it. I know it because it happened to me. And I know other brothers that ain't got baptized yet, and they're just as saved as I are. I am. They love the Lord like I do. They're different. You see what I mean? I told him the other day, I ain't got a water baptism pool in my in my church that I pastor at. You know, and I, I'm sort of afraid to get one because there'll be always somebody say, well, you, Brother Bible, would you pa- uh, baptize me? And they're not even saved. I've only baptized, uh, in reality, I've only baptized one person. <clears throat> I baptized a couple of people a long time ago and they wasn't saved. That was when I first got saved. They wasn't saved, but I baptized them and I didn't know no better. You know, but I baptized another person I believe that was saved. And when I went down and I baptized that person right before I did, God's presence came on me and started speaking to the people around about me. And I know it was of the Lord because his power was on me. Plus, I prayed about it. And then I baptized her in the name of the Father and Son, the Holy Ghost. And I dipped her all the way under and come up, you know, and no doubt she felt good. But that's what that ain't what saved her right there. She got saved before that. That's just something you do after. You know, in John's days, he baptized to show what was coming. But after John's days and after the Holy Ghost was given, they baptized after right there. You get saved and and then you're baptized to show what happened in your heart. John was showing what's fixing to come. He said, I baptize you with water, but there's one mightier than me that come and baptize you with fire and of the Holy Ghost. (laughs) And that happened to me. I got baptized with fire and of the Holy Ghost right when I got saved. It's plain and simple. And later on, that, a few months later, I got baptized in water. But it couldn't nobody convince me that I wasn't saved. But because when I got saved, I knew it. I felt it. I was changed on the inside. I had a new nature about me, the divine nature, God in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I didn't want to sing the songs of the world anymore. I didn't want to act like the world anymore. I wanted to run to God after that. That's a sign of being saved right there. You know what I mean? I don't have the love of the world in me no more. Though I can be entertained, this old flesh, you can entertain it with the world. But it'll never make you happy right there. You can only entertain you for a while. It's like a drug. You know, those drugs after a while, they get to where they can only tickle you a little bit. You know what I mean? It never satisfies you. And it's never the same as the first few times you've done it. You know what I mean? Running with the world like that. So you can uh, be entertained by the world, but you'll never be happy in the world. He, he, we ain't got the love of the Father in us right there. So go back and read this, and I hope you are saved and born again. I'm not trying to make you doubt it or nothing, but you got to check your salvation. Make sure that you have been born uh, that second birth, that spiritual birth, which is from heaven, the Lord from heaven right there. And I have been born And I didn't just believe in my mind no more. I believed in my heart when I turned 20. So this is not talking about water baptism right here. This is not talking about the washing of the water by the word right here. This is talking about the natural birth right here. Though I do think the washing of the water by the word has something to do with your salvation. I don't believe this scripture is talking about it. You know what I'm talking about? The washing of the water by the word is Jesus Christ. He is the word. Right there, but a, a Christian has to take a spiritual bath every day. Right there. <clears throat> so God will fellowship with you. You can't live like the devil and expect God to bless you. It's just plain and simple as that. He will in his mercy. He'll speak to you when you're not walking in the light of his word. He'll speak to you and he'll try to use you as much as he can. You know, right there. Just think about it. Just, just start studying your Bible every day for yourself. Get Leave all that other stuff alone. 
and just find a good place of prayer every day and a good place of honesty and honest prayer every day and then start trying to practice what the Word says. And the light will shine through you right there. You got a, you got a light on in your heart. But when you start walking in the light of His Word, you start shining to a lost and dying world. They, they can tell something different. I've had so many times, and I'm not bragging on myself, I had so many times that people say, I knew there was something different about you. I knew it. After I said, hey, man, would you listen to me on the Internet or would you listen to me on the radio station or whatever, you know? And then when you, when you get mature as a Christian, get on the radio. Use your money towards it. Get in old folks' homes. Go visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. That's true religion right there. Somebody talking about old-time religion. Well, there you go right there. True religion and undefiled before God is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. Get out in the highways and byways wherever God leads you. Right there. If he leads you to another state, make sure he's leading you. If he leads you to another country, make sure he's really leading you. And how do you know? His spirit will be upon you. You'll have peace. He'll lead you forth with peace. Ain't that what the Bible says? He'll lead you forth with peace. He said go out and preach the gospel to all the world. But as he leads you out there, if you look a little closer in the Bible, you know what happens to most people? I'll tell you this right now. Judging righteous judgment. They take one scripture out of the Bible and claim that scripture, and that's the way it is. Nobody's telling me nothing different. But I've learned this my 30 years of being saved, almost 30 years of being saved. You got to take the Bible as a whole to get an understanding of the Bible, a complete understanding of the Bible. You can't just take one scripture. Most of the time people take one scripture out of context. And, and, and sometimes they take it and it's right, but there's some different thoughts attached to that one scripture that you have to put together. Quit being selfish. Look at the Bible as a whole here. Be honest. What happens when you take one scripture and you claim that scripture and you run with that scripture like it's the, you know, the truth no matter what? You're not being honest. You're being selfish because the Bible says it over here. Look at it a little deeper. It's plain and simple. Look at it a little deeper and look at that as a whole. I, I believe there's so many preachers make mistakes like that. So many people believe so many things. They take from the word of God and the devil gets in their mind and they don't look at the rest of it. You got to, especially this salvation. I mean, the salvation part is you, you got to really look from, actually you got to look from Genesis to Revelation. But if you really want to get real technical, look from the gospels until you know, Paul at least, or John, the first John, you know what I mean, to get a better understanding of true salvation. John, first John, it lays it out. It lays it out real plain. It lays it out real plain. But you can also abuse John's first John too. You have to watch out right there. You'll, you'll misunderstand what he's trying to say in first John. Trust me, I've been studying and praying over it for a long time. And... You don't get First John right off the bat. It, as simple as it is, there is a spiritual meaning right there that people are missing. You know, then you look at Paul's writings, and you look in some of Paul's writings. You think, well, all I got to do is this. But if you look at Paul overall, you'll see what he really believes. You got to look at Paul overall, all his writing. Be honest. Don't be so stubborn thinking, well, I'm going to prove this preacher wrong. And you'll never get nothing from God like that. When you go study about salvation through the Apostle Paul, a lot of people do, you look at all of Paul's writings. Look over that book of Acts and Romans and put it all together. See what he's talking about. You know, I could easily say the Philippian jailer says, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's true. But if you look at Paul's writings a little deeper, you'll see what Paul's really saying right there. And he also took that man and he explained many different words to that man that night. He gave him the whole gospel that night. It was bigger than just saying, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul explained to him that night, all of it together. 
You know what I mean? Just look at that. Be honest. Don't just take that one little spot. And let's be honest. Do I believe that it takes believing in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? Yes. Plain and simple. But what is he really saying? He's saying believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Believe in the word of Christ right there. It's just like this. How can you be saved and not believe in the virgin birth? But yet you believe in the resurrection. Think about that. That's twisted right there. That's what I'm talking about. Taking one spot of the Bible and not applying the other spot. Just be careful when you interpret the Bible is what I'm trying to say to you. Look at it as a whole, especially when it comes to salvation. Because this is a big division in the church world today. This is why they have Catholics, Mormons, uh, Lutherans, Baptists, Pentecostals. You ever wonder why that is? Because most of it hinges on how to get saved. Most of it hinges on how do you really get saved? Or is baptism essential to salvation? Or do you receive the baptism later of the Holy Ghost? Or you receive it right when you get... Those, it's all to do with, just about to do with salvation right there. So my suggestion to everybody that's under sound of my voice, go look at the Bible as a whole, study it, pray over it, and look what he says about salvation, what Jesus said about salvation. And don't say, oh, that's, that's all I got to do. You know what I mean? Don't, just take that one verse. You got to take the whole Bible. Okay, it's like salvation like this, okay? God has to deal with you before you get saved. You see what I mean? God has to draw you before you get saved. And then we learn in the Bible that God saves us such as be of a contrite spirit and a broken heart. And then we learn in the Bible that yes, you've got to believe, but what kind of belief? It's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's the inner man. You see what I'm talking about? And then you've got to look at this. He said, for whosoever calls on the Lord shall be saved. Wait a minute. It just said I had to believe, but he said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You call because you're believing. It's just plain and simple as that. That's what I'm talking about. Don't take one scripture. I could take John 3.16. I thought about making a sermon on Will John 3.16 get you to heaven? Yes, it will if it's applied right. This is Bible belief right here. You know my kids. I could take up any kid in the church and I could get them to quote this scripture out loud in the church and look at them and say, do you believe that? And you know, most kids will say, yes, I do. But they're not saved. You got to receive that into your heart. You got to believe it with all your heart. God's got to deal you and draw with you. And you got to see yourself as a hellbound sinner. The Bible says you're not going to come to the light unless your evil deeds be reproved. That means God's got to expose you for who you really are. It's plain and simple as that. Think about it a little bit. <clears throat> I got true salvation. Do you? Are you really saved? And I hope you are. You know, I think it's a very dangerous thing when people, I heard this preacher one time, this guy, this kid got saved. Well, he said he got saved. He's just a little kid. And that preacher, right when he announced it, that preacher said, don't you let nobody tell you you're not saved. That's not what you tell a kid. You got to, you got to say, that's good, son. That's real good. Let's see it. Let's see it. And you watch that kid a little bit. And you see if he's really changed. Did he really get saved? You know, like my pastor said, he said his two daughters wasn't saved. But yet they wanted to baptize them in water. And he knew they wasn't saved. He said, I didn't say nothing. I just let them be baptized. He had enough faith to believe that, hey, through his prayers, they would get saved. But yet the preacher wanted to baptize them. They wanted to get up there and be baptized. They got caught up in the moment. But they wasn't saved. They were just little kids. But later on in life, they really got saved. <laughs> in matter of fact, one of them got saved way later in life, in the shower. I've never heard the testimony of one of them, but I know she was saved. 
She said she was saved. Her pastor said she was saved, and I believe it because this man, this pastor I'm talking about is Gerald Reed, and he made sure that you were saved. <laughs> That's one thing he really believes in is preaching about salvation, making sure you're really saved. He'll, he'll, he'll keep you on your toes about being saved. You know what I'm saying? And when he says you're saved, I believe it. <laughs> and, and I can see it. And when somebody says they're saved and they're really saved, you can see the difference in them. They love the Lord. I know this one guy, he's undied. He loved the Lord just as much as I did. Maybe even more. <laughs> in the sense of in his heart. But he could not stay away from the drugs. He could not stay away from the drugs. But I knew this boy was saved. Well, when he was trying to do God's will and got away from the stuff, you could just tell he loved the Lord. But then he dropped back into drugs and he loved the Lord. He knew he was doing wrong. It finally killed him. Finally killed him. But he went to heaven. He was saved. Yet so is by the fire. But he'll suffer uh, loss at the judgment seat of Christ right there. He, he's going to lose his rewards. He died early. You know what I mean? The people he could have won, he might endanger them to go to hell. You know what I mean? God's... And uh, gave us a certain amount of people to win to the Lord right there. He's gave us strength to win people to the Lord. You know, I know another one that he loved the Lord. He could he served the Lord as long as he was in jail. When he got out of jail, he just couldn't help himself. You know what I mean? He fought. fought. He, he tried to do God's will when he was out of jail. And what he, he had a light about him. And he worked with me, and I love working with him. And he just, you know, what I say, a true Christian. But then he followed some things and, and he died before his time, you know, and he got into drugs and stuff like that. One sin led to another. And they found him on his knees in the bathroom dead. You know, and the pastor a week before that said, son, you're going to die. And, and he hollers out and says, I know it. And he died a week later right there. So watch out for them drugs. Watch out for them sins that gets a hold of you real bad. I tell you. But I love the Lord today. I, I I was just meaning this for being like a 10-minute sermon, but the Lord kept bringing it out. And the devil tried to hinder me. I don't know if y'all know that. Right? I can feel him. It was trying to hinder me from preaching the word of the Lord, you know. But I know God's spirit. I know when he keeps trying to move on me and keeps speaking through me right here. But I hope you got something out of what's being said today. I love you. I I'm judging righteous judgment today. And I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying check your salvation. Check about it, you know. And I, I would say this. A thought just come to my mind. God brought it to my mind. If you're a pastor of a church, and if somebody has taught you that's the washing water by the word, and that's what you've been preaching, it's okay to admit to yourself and to God first and admit to your congregation I don't think that's the washing of water by the word. I did, but I see it a little differently. It's okay to admit that to your congregation. They'll respect you for that. They're following you. What Just about whatever you say, they'll do it. Just think about that. I say go back and reread this Bible. And I was part of the Baptist Association. And I went to college at so-and-so. And I hope they was real. You know what I mean? But I, I love the Baptist church. I love Baptists. I love all kinds of different denominations. I, I don't agree with a lot of them, but I love the people. I want to see them blessed. I want to help them. But I learned something about the Baptist church that, and I don't mean this to be ugly, they follow one another when the Bible don't necessarily say it. And I don't want to be one of those preachers that follow man rather than God. Just because my Baptist brothers say something, I, I remember growing up in my church and disagreeing with the brother. And I, I disagreed with the pastor sometimes. Nothing bad. It wasn't nothing drastic. But I disagreed with, I saw things in scriptures and he disagreed with things I said. And other brothers disagreed with things I said. And some things I disagree with what they say. And I'm not talking about an argument. I'm just talking about a scripture. We might be like puzzled about a scripture and we think it's this and this one thinks it's that. You know what I mean? We didn't have a knockdown drag out or nothing. But don't follow just because somebody says it that that's the gospel truth. Right there. Follow the Lord. 
Get in it for yourself. You'll if you get dig in this word for yourself and put the commentaries down, put the other knowledge down from the scholars for a while, and just get in this word like Paul the Apostle did. Pray over it and just study it slowly. These scriptures, you'll see it in a different light. It'll be more clear to you.